Hello there, welcome to Ink Bros Gaming, my name is Brandon. Today we continue our journey into what it's like getting into Dungeons & Dragons as a new player by playing some one-shots and creating our very first character. We are now two months into getting into Dungeons and Dragons. I'm having so much fun playing these one shots and I'm learning a lot more about the game through combat and roleplay and talking to the dungeon masters. I've been continuing my one shots at Fortress, but I've also been invited to participate in one of the most challenging one shots I've done by a friend named Ben who I met playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Before my fourth session of D&D, that's when I was given the invite to participate in a high level one shot for Ben's birthday and I gladly said yes. The encounter was going to be challenging, and our characters would be allowed to be in level 10, which is way beyond anything that I've ever played with before. During the next few weeks, I developed three level 10 characters, including a level 10 version of Calibur, the hypochondriac snow elf from the last vlog, a level 10 version of Barden, the silver tongued bard from the very first one shot, and a level 10 warlock, which is a character that is heavily involved with my main player character that I'm developing and is my backup in case anything ever happens to them. So I figured these one shots would be a good chance to revisit these classes and see how I feel about them. In week four of our Fortress one shots, I was once again joined by Ethan. In this adventure, I once again elected to play as Calibur as this softy, airy fairy ranger has really grown on me. Ethan played a paladin named Copia, who wore all black and had a painted skull on their face. In this one shot, our group was tasked by Mercenary Guild to investigate into a lighthouse that had ominously stopped working in a coastal town. We discovered pretty quickly that as a group we gelled pretty well together, which I found really makes the experience more fun. People don't always gel, and that's fair enough because we're all different and have different expectations and styles of playing and experiences, but it does make all the difference when you have a group of people that work well together. After a brief shopping montage, dealing with an ogre who guarded the frozen tundras, the group discovered the lighthouse covered in ice. Everyone ventured inside except for Calibur, who was afraid of seeing someone unalive but I was also rolling very high survival checks, which revealed to us that we may be encountering something big and icy, and I didn't want the group to be ambushed from behind. Meanwhile, Copia and the rest of the group ventured to the top of the lighthouse and discovered an ice baby dragon and its kobold minions. A fight then kicked off with the dragon, nearly taking out the party in one icy blast. Calibur, going full legless, and then grapple hooks to the top of the tower, and after some heavy hits from the rest of the group, Copia got the final strike in with a thunderous smite and slayed the baby dragon. After restoring the lighthouse, the group returned to the guild of Richer, but not before the return of the baby dragon's mother, who was wondering who slew her child. And with that cliffhanger, that was the end of my fourth D&D session. I always have a blast when Ethan comes down to play, and for some reason he always manages to take out the big bads of these one-shots. Weirdly, I'm definitely having the most fun playing a ranger, and it's definitely the class I'm going to play as whenever I do join a campaign, depending on the style and the theme of the campaign. Whilst it won't be Calibur, it's definitely a character that I've been spending a lot of time putting work into. In week 5 of the Fortress one-shots, Ethan wasn't able to join, and I decided to play again as Bard and the Bard. In this one-shot, a power-hungry wizard was transforming people into animals, and a group of roaming adventurers was tasked with infiltrating the wizard's tower, stealing his staff, and defeating him. This one-shot was combat-heavy. But, fortunately, even though we were mostly strangers, our group did really well together strategizing in combat, and we were actually pretty effective. The Pardon, turns out, is excellent in providing support to the other players through his spells, but my favorite part about him is his persuasive skills. We nearly infiltrated the tower by pretending Barden was a lord and was interested in purchasing the tower, but one of our group members was spotted by one of the guards, and we ended up in combat again. I very much have fun as Barden, but 
to me, he is more suited for D&D sessions that involve more roleplay and require persuasive tactics. Since I had a hunch that the level 10 one-shot was going to be more of a combat encounter, that's when I decided to rule out Barton as one of my choices. I've learned it's really important when it comes to playing D&D. It's important to have characters that are suitable for the kind of D&D session that you're playing, as different games can have different tones and different genres, and this was definitely emphasized in my sixth session. For my sixth week of one-shots, Ethan wasn't able to join me, but I decided to try out a new class. For this one-shot, I was a half-orc barbarian named Mac. Mac was a softie who had no interest in being a bloodthirsty orc and had aspirations of being a toy maker. And this one-shot ended up being one of my favorites to play and taught me a lot about what you can do with D&D as a game master. This one-shot was heavily inspired by Shakespeare and was very much a comedy of errors and surprise tragedy as our group navigated the kidnapping of a local Juliet who was being married off with someone she did not want to marry and our task was to get her to the altar to marry her true love. I had a lot of fun being the not so smart orc barbarian with a heart of gold. And this is the first D&D one shot where I actually defeated an enemy and of course this is the one time where my character wasn't interested in bloodshed despite being a barbarian. Our group also got along really well and we had a lot of laughs which helped make this one shot be one of my favorites I've ever played. So after all that I still had a choice to make between Calibre and my warlock named Samara. Samara is a character that is heavily inspired by my witchy character that I made for Baldur's Gate 3. Like most warlocks, she does have a dark and tragic backstory involving the pact, and the more I thought about her character, the more curious I was to see how strong she could become as a level 10 character. And so, I eventually decided that for the level 10 one-shot, I was going to play as Samara. While I've made up some characters before, like Caliber and Barden, Samara will be my first ever Dungeons & Dragons character that I create entirely from scratch. Unlike the other characters that I've played as in the Fortress one-shots where their sheets have already been provided, I will have to work out Samara's stats, her spells, and her class in a way that's going to be suitable for the level 10 one-shot. And because I'm someone that really enjoys roleplay, even though I needed Samara to be combat ready, I wanted her class and her spells to reflect her backstory. So who is Samara? Samara is a half-elf and the daughter of nomadic necromancers. Samara was very much raised to be a witch. She had a rugged upbringing, traveling from town to town, city to city, never really having a permanent home. But she was raised lovingly and shown not to be afraid of the dark, but to be careful of any promises that it may whisper. And despite being frail, she found joy in nature and in music and was encouraged by her parents to find the joy in life. However, one day on the road, she and her parents were kidnapped by unknown forces, bound, chained and separated from her parents. She was imprisoned and tortured by these kidnappers for weeks, months, years. She had no idea how long it had been since she was torn from her family. And through the torture, she prayed to all of the gods, fiends, and fays she could name from her years for studies, and no one answered her pleas. Except one. An entity who called herself Mother Oak appeared to her one day in her prison cell. Mother Oak offered Samara freedom and healing, provided she would surrender her soul to her, having no other choice. Samara bound her soul to Mother Oak. The entity clasped Samara's face, branding it with magical wounds and healing her wounds and broken body. And in an instant, Mother Oak was gone. Samara's appearance was changed, and for the first time in her life, she felt strong and free. All her previous ailments disappeared, and she felt like a new woman. She rose to her feet, taking in her surroundings for the first time anew. And before she knew it, 
she was teleported to the same spot her parents and her were taken all those many moons ago. What was Mother Oak? Where were her parents and who were her kidnappers? These questions would plague her and begin her journey hunting down answers and exacting vengeance on her kidnappers. But despite her dark past, she would rise to help those in need and save as many people as she could while searching the realms for answers. Obviously Samara is a warlock and she has taken a pact without her knowledge to an undead patron and this is going to grant her some really exciting necromantic abilities that I'm really keen to try out. However, after playing around with her being a pure level 10 warlock, I instead opted to multi-class so into sorcerer and bard. This is for game reasons and story reasons, but mainly I wanted to give myself a bit of a toolbox for this one shot, including the ability to be able to heal fellow players. For the one shot, our stats were decided by a dice roll, and this is my character shaped for Samara. So the time finally came to play in one of the hardest one shots I've ever played in. In this one shot, Samara and a group of random adventurers were ripped from their realms and transported to a mysterious hall by a group of powerful wizards and their wizard king. As a bit of roleplay, Samara was immediately on edge from being taken once again and was ready to fight. However, after taking in her surroundings and her fellow adventurers, she relaxed a bit. If only a little. Samara nosed around her Artie, a skilled Asamir rogue, Katola Shadowroar and Merry Guest, a Leonin sorcerer and a tabaxi monk who were a couple, and Thorcrack the Butcher, a half-orc barbarian. The wizards tell the group that their realm is being attacked by waves of enemies and that they summon adventurers to help defend their town. However, their last group of adventurers that they summon have abandoned them, and our group has been summoned to A, defend the town, and B, bring this grievous group back to the wizards dead or alive. The rewards that the wizards offer is a permanent home in this new realm, magical boons, which is additional character abilities that were offered to us by Ben, which is a really fun addition to the one shot, and unlimited access to powerful weapons and gear. Again, really focusing on the roleplay, which is what I enjoy most, Samara agrees to help but on the provision that she can return to her home because again, she has unfinished business. The wizards seem hesitant at first, but agree, which instantly puts Samara back on edge. The party then ventured into the town and we had the longest shopping spree of three magical, powerful items, which is fun for us players and is a great bit of flavor for the one shot, but it also made us really suspicious as to why Ben was allowing us to have such powerful magic items. However, our party divided up the shopping and collectively helped choose magical items for each other, whilst also checking with Ben to make sure that it was appropriate for the one shot. Our group of adventurers made their way outside the town to the homestead that the previous group of adventurers were hiding out in. Making their way inside, the previous group of adventurers didn't show any hostility, they were suspiciously complacent about not leaving the homestead, telling us that the state provides. The party realized that the house itself was working against us as Thorcrack was charmed against his will into staying. After the party wisely started slapping everybody in the room to shake off the magical charm from the house, both our party and the previous group of adventurers realized that the wizards were lying about the nature of their world, the gifts that they gave us, and had no intentions of letting anybody go home. At this point, our party took a bit of a break because unlike the one shots of Fortress, which go for about three hours, this one shot was already nearly five hours long and was looking like it was going to be going for a lot longer, which actually was a welcome surprise and a really cool experience for me to see what a longer session of Dungeons & Dragons is like. So the plan was that our group of adventurers was going to hand over the initial group of adventurers as a distraction whilst we tried to get the drop on the wizards. However, when we all arrived back at the main hall, it turns out the wizards were laying a trap for us. The wizards encouraged us to hand over the previous group and become their new defenders. 
It was at this moment that Thorcrack turned on our party and allied himself with the wizards. Which, as an aside, was a really, really fun choice and made the combat even more challenging now that we have to fight our friend. After Thorcrack betrayed the group, the wizards collectively cast Fireball on the first group of adventurers and then we rolled for initiative. What then happened was a wild four hours of deadly spells, counter spells, and bloody betrayal. So personal highlights was to mention during Artie the Rogue behind the Wizard King so they were able to sneak attack and deal a massive amount of damage. Samara at one point also transformed into a dragon, but my standout highlight for me was during the combat I was able to do something that I've been wanting to do with a Dungeons and Dragons character for months. And the whole reason that Samara's pact is with the undead is I got to cast Form of Dread. Samara's Form of Dread starts with the red tips of her hair dripping blood as shadow engulfs her body and shape shifting her into a nightmarish wraith. And it was so cool. But after a total of nine hours of this one shot and only being able to take out one of the five wizards, we had to wrap it up as most of us had to go home as it was getting pretty late this was my first intensive session of deadly combat and also the longest session of DD that i've ever played despite being really tired after it all i had a lot of fun and i really enjoyed my time with this new group of players who knew each other well and had a lot more experience with DD, and they were really kind and welcoming and but mainly it was just a really nice way to spend ben's birthday i've learned a lot about strategy in this session and running a more powerful DD character and through this combat it's actually really helped me inform a lot more about samara's character and class choices if i ever get to two players in a campaign so hopefully this isn't the last that we see of her this however this comes back to the main experience that i've learned playing DD. is that joining a campaign as a new player is one of the hardest things to do. So I've had a lot of questions and I've talked to a lot of dungeon masters throughout this time that I've been getting into D&D and talking with them I've told them how much I love creating characters and world building their backstories and the world around them and every single dungeon master has told me the same thing. Maybe I should start my own campaign and learn to be a dungeon master. It seems that I'm slowly dipping into the forever DM territory. And honestly, the more I learn about Dungeons and Dragons, the more keen I am in running something. I've honestly already come up with the groundwork for a small horror mystery campaign. But after speaking with Ethan, he suggested that I should probably do a one shot first to A, learn how to run a game and also learn my own style of DMing. Funnily enough, it seems like I might be running my own campaign before I actually get to join one, but the journey still continues. If you have any suggestions for someone like me who is wanting to dip their toe into learning to be a dungeon master and running sessions, let me know, as this journey into the world of Dungeons and Dragons is about to get a whole lot larger. I just also just want to say thank you if you've watched this far. The D&D videos are new to this channel. We're trying out different things like recapping the games that we've played. But if you have any suggestions for us and what you would like to see from these D&D vlogs, make sure to comment below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you when I see you.